Hello and welcome to my tutorial here on Girls Morph. I'm not quite sure how to say that, but this this is a program that was made by Two Cows Developer. They are no longer in business, so this is a free program. You can see here it is freeware, and link that I have below will take you to this website here, this Internet Archive site, and you can download it here with the zip file. I've already downloaded it, so go ahead and download this, and then I'm going to go ahead and start it up here. So I've got the program loaded up here. So what I'm going to do is first load up my images. So on the left, I've got the Mona Lisa. On the right, I've got a girl that I got this image from Pexels, a great website for free images. And I don't think I've put it down there, so I'll probably put a link down there below. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to select this morph option up top here. And I'm going to select one way morph. That'll just morph from this image to this image and then stop. And because that's just what I'm gonna be doing with my images for my AI animations mostly. And you can select one of the other options though. So how this works is with control points. So we put these control points here on our left image. Now while it's adding these, you notice it's also adding them on the right image. So for now, we're not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna put a few control points here around the edges of the eyes, uh, the tip of the nose, the chin, um, right where the jawbone kind of starts going down. And then I'll just do the top of the head here as well. Okay, now if you notice while I'm putting them here on the left image, it's also creating them here on the right image. And I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit and then blow this one up. And now what I do is I take this right image here and I select this option over here, the move control points option. Now, when I hover over these, if you notice, it highlights them here on the left side and shows me where they are. So this one is the Mona Lisa's left eye, well, her right eye left me, okay, the far edge. So I'm just gonna match these up with where they are on the left image. And basically these control points will guide the image on how to morph. So the more of these you add, the more kind of a good, kind of a realistic morph effect you'll get. And you, you actually don't even need to do this many for it to work well. It just depends on the images too. Since these are both images of um, people, you know, both women here, it'll, it'll work pretty good. If you're morphing like, you know, a truck into a bridge, you might want to add more, but it just kind of depends on the images you're morphing. So I'm basically just trying to match all these dots up like, okay, this is the left corner of the jaw there. This is the right corner of the jaw. This is the base of the chin. I also usually add a couple here to the mouth. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll put at least a couple here on the corners. Okay. And I'll move these. Okay, that's actually the nose, so this, okay, that's the mouth there, okay. So I missed the tip of the nose there, okay, I think that's all of them. Yep, okay, and now the next thing we want to do here, I'll minimize these a bit, kind of back them out of the way here, is you hit this, and then you select your animation period, and I believe I usually select 200, okay. Yep, so I've got 200 there, I'm going to select that. And then you can preview it by doing this. And you see that kind of preview in the corner there it might be kind of small, but that just kind of shows you the morphing effect with a zero. And now I'm going to go ahead and save my file. And I'm going to call this morp test three because I called the last one. And now there's some options here. I'm going to, I usually do this at 30 frames a second. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now here is where there's some options. You can just do it uncompressed, which it's going to be huge. It's going to be like a really big file, like many gigs. So the only one that works here for me is this Logitech video. Ultimately though, I'm going to recompress this again outside of this with another video editor. So I'm not sure. It depends on which codecs you have. And, and this company is no longer around. So these might be out of date too, but this second one here works pretty well for me. So I'm just going to use that one. 
and then it'll take a little while, not too long here, maybe a few minutes, and I'll come back and I'll play the video when this is done. Okay, and I've got the video here now loaded up of the morph you just made. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so you see in a very relatively quick time, I made a pretty reasonable morph there. So for a free morph program, you know, morphing two images, I think this is more than adequate to do the job. And like I said, you can go around and make a whole bunch of control points, you know, and and even get more intricate with it. So what I actually got this for is to morph my animation, my AI videos together. So I'm going to go ahead now and continue on with the tutorial and go to that step. But this should have given you a pretty good idea now on how to use this morphing program. Okay, so this is my folder with both my animations. So I still have them still broken up into images from Disco to Fusion. So I have this one here. And my idea here was just to take two animations that don't go together at all. And then I have this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this just kind of landscape scene here. And I'm going to copy my very last frame in it. And then I'm just going to stick it in a folder here, paste it there. And then I'm going to take the very first frame of the one that I want to morph the video into. And they all, they all, and they are also both the same resolution. Okay. So they're both 768 by 440. That was supposed to be 760. Whoops. Okay. Anyways, here are both of the files here. They're both the same resolution here. And this is the last frame of one sequence and the first frame of the next one. And now I'm going to go ahead and open my Squirrels morphing program. Okay, so I've got both my files here now. I have converted them both into JPEG files. So I'm going to open up my first one here. Kind of resize a little bit. And then open up the second file here that I'm going to morph it into and do the same thing here. We'll just resize it a little bit. Okay, so the idea here is I'm just going to take uh, like something that's a point of interest maybe here in the first one and then just kind of put the points around it and maybe morph it. Like maybe here, maybe I'll take the river and morph it into the house or something like that. Sure, let's go ahead and try that does look like there's already a morph point on there. I might have clicked on that accidentally. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead here and take... Oh, yeah. First thing I need to do, though, is do this one way because I just want it to morph once. I don't want it to morph back and forth. So I'm going to hit morph, change it to one way here. And then I might as well get some of this out of the way, too. Let's go ahead and set this for 200 per cycle. Okay, so I could take like this rock here too, and maybe let's try that. Let's maybe try just turning this um, rock into the house and see how that looks. So I'll just put a few keyframes here, kind of do this. You know what? No, let's not. I'll change my mind. Let's do the river again. That's the biggest thing there. Let's just turn the river into the steampunk cottage. Okay, so I'm just going to put some keyframes here. Or what does it call them? Control points. Okay. So put one kind of there at the edges, just at the four corners here of the river. Maybe one in the middle here. Okay. So, you, you know, you can change this depending on what your scene is. Now I'm going to go over here to the house and my control points will match up over here. So this one is in the middle. So I'll put this kind of here in the middle let's see this is at the top i'll put this one up here at the top of the cottage this is in the bottom left corner i'll put this one over in the bottom left corner whoops okay there it is grabbed it okay and then we've got our one here in the middle over here and then our one over here on the far side, which looks like it's already kind of over there. We'll put it just down a little bit. Okay. Okay, and we can kind of see our preview over there. And now I'm going to make an AVI file out of it here. Riv to cottage. We're turning our river into a cottage here. 
And I've been doing this at 30. I'm going to go ahead and keep it at 30. And again, I, I've been using this one as the only one that works other than the uncompressed, which is really big. So, you know, even if it's uncompressed, you can just run it through another video editor later and compress it, which is what I usually wind up doing anyway. Okay, I'm going to go ahead now and start my morph here. So again, the idea of this program and using it with Disco Diffusion is just to basically tie together uh, two videos that normally don't go together, you know, with Disco Diffusion. So, so if you have a video that maybe went bad in the middle, you can still save part of it or just, you know, maybe you just want to make a video 100 frames at a time and start a new one and not deal with all the keyframes. So that's just kind of my idea here is to kind of salvage those. Okay, so now... Let's go to the next step here. Okay, and where I'm at now, I have made I've made a video out of those two um, frame sequences. So here is the first part of my video. Then I take the morph video that I just made with the squirrels program and I stick it at the end of this one. And then I take the second video that I made. So again, my main idea when I got this program and kind of wanted to learn to use it was to salvage videos that maybe kind of went bad halfway through. Or just to make, you know, just to make a way to transition any two videos I want together. So, you know, I can just go in Disco Diffusion, maybe make a 200 frame movie one day, then make a completely different one the other day. And not really have to worry about whether they go together or not, or time with keyframes. It's just, it's just another option, something I kind of want to do. So I just thought I'd show you the results here. And let's go ahead and just run it. I can just run it right here in the editor and see right now if it works. Okay, yeah, so it's, you know, it's not ideal. It's not as cool looking as, you know, how it does in Disco Diffusion, but it definitely looks like it's going to be a great way to salvage either failed animations, you know, maybe the first part of it looked good and then it went bad, or just to tie together two completely unrelated videos, not just, you know, Disco Diffusion videos, but really any kind of videos. That was just my main idea here, and it looks like it's going to work good. So thank you for watching, and I'll go ahead, and I'm probably just going to go into Topaz, and just render a video with it after this is done and clean it up a bit and see how it looks. So thank you for watching. More stuff on the way very soon.